When it comes to Tinker Hatfield, of course, he's most famous for the Jordan line, but he also dips into other lines at the Nike brand. As some of you may not know this, but maybe all of you do. He also dipped into the Nike Air Max line and the Air Max 90 is one of the most iconic sneakers of all time. A classic silhouette that is even still current today is uh, celebrating its 30th anniversary year. It's one of his designs and they've gone everywhere with this all throughout the year all over the map og colorways brand new silhouettes taking it into fantastic different ways there was something i did recently i can't remember what it was called but it had a clip on the front hopefully i can put a picture up and show you that shoe which is a whole new look at the air max 90s and then here we are today taking a whole old look at the Air Max 90s. Yes, you heard that correctly. What they have done over the past 12 months with the 30th anniversary year is to take this silhouette and push it to its future self. But this shoe is actually looking back, way back to even before this was an Air Max 90. And we're going back to the drawing board, going back to Tinker Hatfield's sketches and designs, back to the original when this was actually called an Air Max 3 and not an Air Max 19. It's that that gives the inspiration for the shoe. It's that where the shoe starts off. And it's that that we're going to talk today about as we take a close up look at the upcoming release of the Nike Air Max 3 Bright Crimson. This is the Tokyo Butter 23 Secret Channel. Tokyo Butter 23 Secret Channel Days. My name is Chapsu no Day. My name is Jimmy And every single day from Tokyo, Japan, I bring you content about upcoming sneaker releases, sneaker news, and sneaker reviews. And today it's an Air Max 90 that's in the spotlight. And I love to do shoes that are celebrating an anniversary year. This year there's been a whole bunch of them, some really significant ones, down to some less significant ones. The biggest shoes of the year, in my opinion, are the Superstar uh, Adidas celebrating its 50th year, the Jordan 5 celebrating its 30th year, and the Air Max 90 also celebrating its 30th year. Then Maybe a little bit lower than that, the Air Max 95, of course, five years after the Air Max 90s, makes sense, celebrating its 25th year. And then a distant sort of shadow of a fifth place is the Ultra Boost, celebrating its fifth anniversary year. Not really something you want to celebrate too hard, right? The fifth anniversary year. A, a shoe shouldn't be celebrating its fifth anniversary year. It's not old enough to celebrate an anniversary. Maybe 10 years, but that would still be pushing it. But five, you know, mm. But this shoe today is right in there with that. One of the, it's a classic. It's one of the most iconic and recognizable silhouettes of all time, the Air Max 90. And what they're doing is they're kind of bookending it. They've done a bunch of shoes throughout the year that, like I said, pushed the silhouette to new levels, new takes on it, uh, the next sort of generation of Air Max 90s. But this one here is going right back to the beginning and then just a little bit before that to when this was just in the design phase and sort of planning phase, Tinker Hatfield, classic sneaker designer, uh, designing this shoe. And originally because there was an Air Max 1, an Air Max 2 and two lights, they thought Air Max 3, of course, but it was then that they decided instead of doing that, let's name these after the years. I'm guessing that they realized that they were not going to drop one every single year, uh, so that they decided to uh, name them after the years instead of naming them 1, 2, 3, 4, 5. Uh, so, for example, if you think jump between Air Max 95 and Air Max 97, there's a year missed in there. So it, it sort of makes sense to tag it to the year. Uh, and that was a decision made fairly early on. Uh, now, Maybe you don't need to know this, and maybe you won't believe it, uh, but when this shoe came out, the Air Max 90 was 1990, obviously, uh, and I was 14 years old. Quick bit of maths means that I'm 44 years old right now, and I know I look older. I mean, 44 is ancient, but I look even older than that. Uh, but this shoe came one year too early for me. Uh, when when shoes were big, sneakers were big, when I was a kid, it was when I was 15. That's when it was like a big thing to go out and buy a proper pair of shoes. When I was 14, you were still letting your mum buy your shoes, if you know what I'm saying. Uh, and then the Air Max 180s was the shoe that sort of uh, took everybody with them into that kind of like, like be fashionable, you've got to get this shoe. Uh, so that was the, the one after the Air Max 90s. So for me, the Air Max 90s is all about now. It's all about recent shoes, but I know for some of you guys out there, the Air Max 90s have that retro feel back in the day. And then also 
that feel of the current stuff and the stuff that they've brought out uh, recently. So for me, it's kind of a, you know, whenever I do an Air Max 90, it's kind of about like learning a bit about the shoe, but also, you know, what I love about the shoe now, as opposed to, you know, in its history. So uh, so with all that in mind, let's get into it and look at the shoe. I've already talked about how it's a off sketch pad of uh, Tinker Hatfield of the design table, not, uh, not really the finished article. And that's kind of the basis of this video today, that what we're gonna do is look at the hits on the shoe that either talk about that kind of rough unfinished feel or are elements of the shoe that didn't make it onto the final Air Max 90 design or were changed before they made it to the final Air Max 90 design. Uh, so what we'll do is we'll just go through the shoe I think it makes sense to probably just go through the shoe like randomly. I'm not going to try and order this. Uh, I'll just sort of jump out of my head and sort of go bang. This is what I want to talk about right now. So we'll start uh, with that air unit. That's one of the classic design elements of the shoe is that uh, arrowhead, let's call it that, an arrowhead air unit uh, down there on the heel section of the mid sole. Uh, and it's really classic, you know, the air unit and then that surrounding bit on there. And what they've gone for on this shoe is that crimson that they're saying, you know, that's the name of the shoe, but it's a weathered look that they've gone for. They've kind of strip back uh, some of that crimson to reveal a bit of the white underneath and that's that's the sort of feel that they're going for that unfinished look they didn't really get all the crimson on this guy because it's it's raw uh, and it's not yet that finished article so that um discoloration on the air unit around the air bubble uh, is a big deal and it's kind of a big signature feature of the shoe and they took the time to take it even further and pop it onto the outsole like this and hopefully you can see here on the outsole uh, the way that air unit wraps around onto the outsole with that roughed up unfinished crimson effect uh, and also staying on the outsole, it's notable to me uh, that the back end of the shoe does have that roughed up unfinished crimson effect. But when you get to the front end of the, the outsole, uh, where there's a second hit of crimson, it's solid and finished and complete. So again, that's the sort of narrative of the shoe, the bits that are finished and the bits that are still sort of in production or uh, are still um, being thought about. So, uh, so let's get back up to the upper end of the shoe, the top half, because uh, there's a lot to look at on there. And I want to start with a place that didn't make it into the final design for Air Max 90s and that's zooming in round about I don't know maybe you could call it the three quarters line the quarter line is uh, you know the bit that splits the toe from the rest of the shoe uh, but you go back roughly uh, towards the same like percentage back in the shoe uh, there's usually a little window in there with some kind of rubber inside that says Air Max or something to that effect on Air Max 90s uh, but you can see here that it isn't a window and it isn't on rubber it's just more or less I think I'm right in saying it's more or less like something that's just been printed on there it's not even uh, constructed on there if you know what I mean stitched or added or anything like that it's more a print uh, and that's a main feature that was updated uh, to get into the actual Air Max 90s and one of the main parts of this that can let us call it an Air Max 3 instead of an Air Max 90 because that's very, very different on there. Uh, and that's a, you know, a little detail, probably the biggest detail on the shoe that uh, is uh, something that made it onto the Air Max 3s but didn't make it onto the Air Max 90s or was updated for the Air Max 90s. Uh, and then the signature feature, as far as I'm concerned, when design comes, comes all around the top line. Now, I'll show you it from two different angles. One from the side, so you get an idea of that sort of roughed up effect that's going on around the top line there and the, the sock liner. And then if you look down from above, you really get a sense of that unfinished feel to the shoe this is nothing to do with design uh, and trying to sort of um, create the elements of the shoe this is just not finishing the stitching to give it that roughed up feel that sort of in the process feel uh, and that carries on towards the back of the shoe as well on the heel it does look like your standard Air Max branding on the back in crimson on crimson uh, and that same sort of air and uh, air branding unit in the, the shape that is now traditional for Air Max 90s uh, but it still has that unfinished feel about the back end maybe it's because of that unfinished top line sort of spilling over onto the back end of the shoe but you feel even looking at the heels here there's that unfinished effect and that heel shot is a good place to look to the last thing uh, which is through very difficult to see but you can just catch the top end of the tongue very light thin tongues on these guys not the padded tongues and the more comfortable tongues you'd get with Air Max 90s uh, and again more of a prototype feel or a, a design you know in the process feel uh, to the tongues as well uh, and that's uh, you know just the, the kind of features on the shoe all over is about that you know just a roughed up sort of in the the middle in the process of getting designed and, and becoming what is one of the most iconic silhouettes of all time uh, so let's roll back out have a look at the whole shoe even if they made this an Air Max 90 with all of its trimming on there, white with hits of crimson and black, 
I think it would be hot. People would be really seriously interested in it. And I've got a feeling this Air Max 3 take on the shoe is going to make it big. I think people are going to be really interested in it because it is a unique element, a piece of history of the Air Max 9. Uh, so it's, it's got that unique story to it that I think a lot of people out there will gravitate to uh, and make this maybe one of the more popular shoes of this uh, winter season as we get into December. So for me, very big yes. And maybe for you on December 10th, you want to dip into your pocket, pull out your money, put it on the counter and grab yourself a pair of these. I think they're great. I love it. I think it's a really cool story. I love the historical element of it and the look of it. It's all in all a great looking sneaker for me. So very big yes. Okay, it's time for me to sign off and do what I do at the end of every single video, which is just to tell you that I do this every single day. Uh, and because I do this every single day, that means that you are guaranteed to see me tomorrow.